Good morning. morning. And a happy third day of Christmas to you all. I had been toying with the idea of having an an incentive for attending today and giving three French hens to every household that showed up, but that kind of faltered. At any rate, we welcome you to Mount Calvary on this glorious Christmas season as we continue to bask in the light of Christ's birth. Um, Those of you who are joining us online, if you want to get a copy of the bulletin to follow along, again, go to our webpage, www.mountcalvarypeoria.org, and then look under news and announcements and you'll see the link for being able to get that. As always, for the rest of you, if you take time to fill out one of the registration cards and then uh, drop it off at the offering plate when you depart, we appreciate your help with that. You may leave an offering at that point in time as well. Uh, Today is also the festival day of St. John, and even though first Sunday after Christmas gets precedence over St. John, we'll remember him in the collect and prayers. And then for those of you who uh, enjoy a beverage at the end of the day, there's a lovely English custom to drink to one another the love of St. John. He's known as the beloved apostle and disciple, and he uh, wrote so movingly of God's love that it is good to remember him in this season. With that said, now wave at one another. Everyone turn and wave. This is passing the peace. Very good. We begin with our opening hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to examine your conscience now in silence before the Lord according to his word and your station in life.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unfamiliar. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in the intro. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the 
O oh God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed in the doctrine of your blessed apostle and evangelist John, may come to the light of everlasting life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. First reading this day comes from the prophet Isaiah. 61st and 62nd chapters. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the response of singing of Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation. Pray by the works of the Lord, study by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading this day is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, the fourth chapter. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, 
God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the gospel verse. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke is recorded in the second chapter. Glory to you, O And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and offer sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was in a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day, and coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated for the hymn.
And so I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Of course, that's not quite literal from the Greek. A more ham-fisted way of getting at Simeon's words might be this. Now you set loose your slave, O Lord, according to your word, in peace. Now, the reason I emphasize that more literal translation is that it gets at something which the standard English rendering doesn't quite bring out. Simeon is, in effect, saying that now he can die in peace. For that was the most common way for a slave to be loosed from his master by death. Now I can die, Lord, just as you said, in peace. And why? Because he, Simeon, had seen the Messiah with his own eyes just as God had promised that he would before he died. And now, having seen what God promised, Simeon confessed he could die in peace, content, untroubled. Now, I realize it can seem a bit of a downer to speak about death on this first Sunday after Christmas, but if we are to receive all the gifts of Christ's birth, then we have to acknowledge that one of those gifts is a peaceful death. And the power of that gift goes so deep that it's inspired the traditional words that we use to dismiss folks from the communion table. When you are set, told, depart in peace, right? This is taken from Simeon. And it means that you, having received the Lord and seen him in the sacrament, you can now go and die peacefully. You are released from slavery. You are sons and daughters of the household. And this also explains why, typically, we sing Simeon's song right after communion to remind us that the Lord's word is fulfilled in our midst, that we are at peace, and that we can go in peace. So let's deal with death and peace for just a moment. We all know what death is, right? This mortal body ceases to function, the spirit departs and goes to its place, and we are at rest for a time. And why many people fear death is twofold, I think. First, there is the dying process, no one I know wants a slow, painful, or incapacitating death, and yet that often is the case when death comes with disease or by accident or with declining health and so on. No one wants that. We fear that. And then there's the actual dying. We don't really know what that's like, what it is to be without a body. It's a rush into the unknown, and worse yet, some folks fear that on the other side of death is judgment, their final reckoning. And they aren't sure how it's going to go, for good or for ill. So there's a lot of fear surrounding death, and yet Simeon sings, now I can go die in peace. And peace, I should add, right, is, is very similar to the joy that we've discussed in this uh, Advent season. In fact, you could say that the whole of Christmas is actually wrapped up in the joy of the good news, the wonder of Jesus' birth in the flesh, and the peace that comes because of that. If joy is the calm certainty that all will be well, peace is the living out of that certainty with God and with one another and with ourselves. That is, if I trust and believe that because of Jesus' birth, there is a new and righteous and holy life given me, I no longer need to fear God. I don't need to run. I can live joyfully at peace with him doing his will because I am new and forgiven and made whole. And likewise, being at peace with God and knowing that I have been given eternity means that I can be at peace with others because I have nothing to worry about with them. I don't need to vindicate myself over against others. I don't need to put others in their places. If God is for me and in Christ gives me all things, I can go to others with grace and peace and goodwill, fearing nothing. And finally, I can have peace in myself, no longer fearing every wayward thought that might cross my mind or every half-hearted passion that might grip me or every misspoken word, for I'm forgiven and made new and called a son or a daughter of God, and that is what I am in Christ, no matter what. In Christ, my friends, you have peace, and you can die in peace, knowing that no matter how your death comes, God is with you and for you in Christ. He will carry you and comfort you and strengthen you. And on the other side of death is life for you in Christ. For he promises that having risen, he will keep you alive 
even as your body rests in the grave until that glorious day when all are raised. You will live in him, and in him there is no judgment. For you are washed and made clean. So we can all say with Simeon, Lord, now you are loosing your slave in peace. Hallelujah. And, and why this peace? Because even as Simeon held that infant Jesus, he, Jesus, was already at work. Now, it may seem odd to speak of an infant being at work, but this is the truth of what God was doing. Jesus was already at work on our redemption when he was conceived as one of us and took our flesh and condition to himself entirely. Jesus was already at work when he was born like us, of a woman and under the law. And here, Luke wondrously records that Jesus was at work for us when Mary and Joseph brought him up to the temple. Now, I need to tell you that there's a lot of inside baseball going on in those first couple of verses from our gospel reading this morning. First, there's the business of Mary's purification. To put it briefly, because God had made it clear that life is in the blood and that the only useful blood was in the atonement sacrifice, all other contact with blood, no matter how natural, casual, or innocent, put one into a state of ritual defilement so that you could not join with God's people in worship at his tabernacle. Hence, given the bleeding that's involved with childbirth, a woman was considered ritually defiled for a time afterward. And when that time was up, she offered a sacrifice of thanksgiving for her cleansing and was welcomed back into the congregation. What was Jesus' work in all of that? Well, here's the Lord's humility again. For if ever there was a birth that brought holiness rather than defilement, his certainly was it. He was born to cleanse all humanity, and yet for our sake he humbled himself under the law that bound all the rest of us and did nothing to stop Mary from cleansing herself of the effects of this birth. And then there's the matter of his presentation. And this harkens back to the exodus from Egypt. If you remember the final plague before Pharaoh loosed his Hebrew slaves, the death of the firstborn, you'll remember that God spared his people from that plague by the blood of lambs smeared on the doorposts and lintels. Well, when the people got out of Egypt, God told them, all of your firstborn belong to me because I spared them in Egypt. And if you want your firstborn for ordinary service, for a common life, then you must redeem them from me by sacrifice. Well, Jesus was a firstborn son. And so if Joseph and Mary didn't offer a sacrifice for his redemption, his life would have been God's by default, and he would not have been free to offer his life as a sacrifice for us. So again, in a delightful irony, the Redeemer lets himself get redeemed for us so that he can give his life freely in our place. Now, did Simeon have the vaguest notion of any of that as he snatched the child from that startled couple's arms? Now, we don't know. All we know is that Simeon recognized his Messiah and Savior in Jesus and rejoiced in peace. And finally, as he spoke of blessing, Simeon warned Joseph and Mary about the Messiah's role in this world. He, Jesus, would either be for a person's fall and rising, or Jesus would be something a person opposes. There would be no middle ground. Thoughts from many hearts would truly be revealed, and so it remains for us. As Jesus comes to us and as we come to Jesus, the thoughts of our hearts are laid bare. First, we see our opposition. Now, we know all about the world's opposition to Jesus. They don't like being told that he is the only way. And they don't like being told that only his way is truth. We know about the world's opposition to Jesus. And we also know about the devil's, right? The old dragon spreads his lies and hatred everywhere, trying to keep the gospel from accomplishing its purpose. But more than that, it turns out our flesh, that nature that we've inherited from Adam and Eve, it also opposes Jesus. And he exposes that. When we fail at agape love, when we willfully sin, when we refuse to forgive, and on down the line, we oppose Jesus, and we discover our rebel hearts. But 
He is appointed to us as Messiah that in him we should fall and rise. And this is nothing less than our baptismal dying and rising with Christ. That old nature has to be put to death in Christ. It must fall and be taken to the cross with him. Our old nature cannot be reformed, only drowned. And indeed in faith, we daily crucify that old nature with sorrow over our sin, repentance and shame, and with the desire to turn away from sin and be loosed from its bondage and be freed to follow Christ. We fall, confessing our sin, confessing that we deserve condemnation, and then, rather than staying down, Christ lifts us up in him, in his life. And he gives us new life and new hearts and new minds and new wills so that in him we recognize the light and truth of God and seek to follow and live in Christ. In him we are raised up. So on this third day of Christmas, let us rise and follow, knowing that we are at peace because of Christ, because he has done everything to accomplish our redemption, even from his infancy. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. I invite you to stand and turn to page 10 in the bulletin as we join together confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man who was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come and give the glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God, Father in heaven, who in the fullness of time sent forth your Son to be the light of the world and to gather for you out of all the kindreds of the earth a redeemed people, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We bless and hallow your name that you have so graciously provided for us and for our salvation. We thank you that through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, we have received the adoption of sons and daughters so that we may call you in spirit and truth, Abba, Father, assured that you are most truly our loving Father and that we are your own dear children. O Father, most loving, grant that we who are under the yoke of sin may in Christ be redeemed and regenerated both in body and soul, and that we may ever be your obedient servants. Empower us by your Spirit to perform the works befitting repentance and faithfully to do your will with a glad heart and a pure mind. O Lord, in your mercy. We beseech you, dear Father, to show us your mercy, deliver us from evil, and rescue us from the due reward of our sins. Shield us in the hour of temptation, and make us to will and do only those things that please you. Grasp us with your fatherly hand, and lead us from the feverish ways of the world to green pastures and still waters. Bestow on us a true faith and a holy love, that the child whom you sent for the great sifting of men and women may be set for our rising rather than our falling. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we implore you to let your grace rest upon us that we may grow strong in the Spirit, be filled with wisdom, and grow in all that finds favor in your sight. 
Let the brightness of your glory shine upon all who feel the need of your mighty aid. Illumine hearts filled with darkness and homes overshadowed with sorrow or suffering. Give the light of truth to all in authority in our own land and elsewhere. And make all our schools fountains of your divine light in a world that lies in the shades of strife, superstition, and ignorance. Lord, in your mercy, establish the reign of the Prince of Peace over the nations of the earth. Visit with your mercies your whole creation and every commonwealth of peoples. And that all may be saved and none lost, bring them to the obedience of that holy child whom you sent for the redemption of all humanity, even your son Jesus, the word made flesh. Let the light of his life, his word, doctrine, and precepts, his miracles, signs, and wonders, his birth, ministry, and character, his passion, death, and resurrection, be the light of divine truth which shall brighten every land. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for all your blessings, but especially for the calling of the holy apostle and evangelist John, and for his witness in word and deed. Help us to continue steadfast in his doctrine, that our understanding may be enlightened and our will perfected. Grant that through the writings of the beloved disciple, to whom you gave the wondrous visions of your glory, that each of our thoughts may be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, the incarnate word, and that we may truly believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and thus possess life through his name. Inspire us to see and know him as the word made flesh, the bread of life, the water of life, the resurrection and the life, the good shepherd, the great high priest, and to see in him your love, O Father, who gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For our sick, our wounded, our hurt, our troubled, our fallen, and our absent fellow believers, we pray. Grant to them whatsoever they need, soundness of body, strength of faith, or security of hope, and grant them all in Christ assurance of salvation. O Lord, in your mercy. And here's this day as we bring our concerns to you in our hearts. Continue to heal and strengthen Penelope Lampton, Lee Moshbaugh, Carol Hoffman, the Reverend Ralph Laufer, Jim Casper, Ardeen Ruckel, Carol Lockridge, Joy Wessler, Penny Boss, Ms. Ritter, Gary Ruckel, Natalie Felice, and Cheryl. Give relief and recovery to Luke Horst and Mark Manthe. Give healing to Harriet Coy, Brian Kelly, Michael Wilson, Virginia, David, Shirley, and Deaconess Jillian. Grant recovery to Graylin and Mark. Continue to strengthen Alice. Grant health and strength to Sheriff Hoffman, Sally Taylor. Ann Bulwark, Marjorie Ruskuski, Earl Boyette, Kathy, Valerie, Chris, Patty, Jim, and Gary. Continue to heal Dave, Lori, Joan, Dale, and Richard. Give continued strength to Jan and Sally. Also be with Kyra and the child she carries, Cheryl Rebel, Gloria, Jameson, Richard, Sally, Steve, and Adriana. Watch over Susie Fink, Esther, Joan, Jenny Bradley, Pat Getz, Theo Norman, Rebecca, Lois, Tamisha, Jenny, John, Laurel, Constance, Linda, Carl, Kenneth, and Lori, grant them all wellness. Speed healing for Pam and Dolores. Bless the Tompkins family and Clara. Grant grace to Jackie and her family. Give relief to Kathy and Lil. Grant strength and healing to Josh, Bill, Braylon, and Gabby. Give health to Gordon, Jim, Lloyd, and Elwin. Be with all travelers to give them safe journeys. Also watch over Shirley, Max, Miracle, Neil, Shane, Faith, Jenna, Steve, Diane and Wally, Stephen, Jerry, Eric, Gloria, Sandra, and Phyllis. Give grace and healing to Christiane, Ruth, Phyllis, and Roy. Be with Luann and Shelby Cooper, Yasmin and Gail. Uphold Rick. Give healing to Gary. Strengthen Sharon and Kathy. Give health to Joel. Be with Tanya Speed, Debbie Block, Deb Alleg, Marcia, Delcy Lane, Becky Richards, Dave, Rob Powell, Mark Dickman, Olivia Bradley, Sharon Rumble, Sherry Emberton, Ron Miller, Sandra, Larry, Rod, Pastor Center, Ginny, David, Shannon, Rudy, Ward, Michael, Dale, Kathy, Gordon, Sandy, Maureen, Pastor Neiman, Mary, Ethan, and Gail, and Jonathan. To give them all healing and strength according to your will. Support all those recovering from disasters of various sorts and be with all those who are working to bring relief in every place where they are needed. We pray that you would bring peace and justice to the nations and keep the scourge of war far off. 
We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and ask you to impede its spread, grant healing and relief, and we continue to pray your grace and strength for all medical workers and first responders. Heal the divisions that bring bitterness to our nation. We especially implore your grace to bring an end to all ethnic and racial bigotry, grant understanding, grace, and equity to all. We lift up all who have suffered violent attacks this last week, praying that you grant mercy, healing, faith, and justice, O Lord. Bring us peace. Watch over Pastor Hake and his family. Continue to give strength and recovery to Ivy and bless their service in Kyrgyzstan. Bless the ministry of Concordia Lutheran School and be with all students and educators everywhere to keep them in health. Give grace and support to all learning situations. Be with our Senate and all its officers, Matthew, our Synodical President, Mark, our District President, and all Senate and District officials, that they may be guided by your word to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Grant stability, faith, and hope to all who are struggling in this economy. Bless the people of Haiti as they struggle to recover and establish a stable civil life. Grant shelter and protection to all refugees, especially those displaced by the conflict in Syria. And finally, we ask that you would send your spirit of peace to Somalia, Myanmar, the Ukraine, Venezuela, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Nagorno-Karabakh, the Middle East, especially Gaza, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, and Yemen, and all places torn by war or civil strife. Lord, in your mercy. We also ask that while our nation continues to live with peril, and while many remain in harm's way, that you would watch over us and show your mercy to all who are in danger or who suffer in any way, comfort those who mourn, heal those who are injured, give wisdom and humility to those in authority. Continue to be with Derek Foote, Joshua Zook, Alex Zook, and all deployed and active duty military personnel and their families. Protect all innocent civilians and bring the wicked to justice. Defend the righteous and lead all to repent of evil and seek your peace. We know that all things are in your hands, Father, and we ask that you would bring justice and establish fair government according to your good and perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us, Father, in these petitions and direct and govern our hearts that we may be preserved in the one holy Christian and apostolic faith unto everlasting life. For it is into your hands that we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh, oh, oh. Let 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the Lamb of God. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in the closing hymn.
The service has ended. Depart in peace. 